Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah, and in this video, I'm gonna go over how to answer a drop down close question that you may encounter on the Next Generation NCLEX exam. So let's get started. What is a drop down close question? Well, this is different from your typical multiple choice or select all that apply questions. Because with this, you're gonna be given information from like a scenario and you have to fill in the blank with the information provided in a drop down box. Now there can be multiple drop down boxes in a question or there could just be one. So let's go over a sample one and I'm gonna walk you through how to answer it. So over here on the left part of your screen, you're going to see that the nurse is providing care to a 36 year old female who is admitted for a new onset of seizures. And then you have like what's part of the electronic health record. You have like a health history tab, nurses notes, vital signs, and laboratory results. So here our laboratory results tab is open and we can see that the patient's had some lab work. It tells us at 7.45 in the morning, the patient had a test for phenytoin and it's measured in micrograms per milliliter. And the patient's value was 22 micrograms per milliliter. And then right beside of it is the reference range for this medication, because we have to check levels for certain medications. And a normal level is between 10 to 20 micrograms per milliliter. Then on the right hand side, we see our scenario with our question. So it says the patient has been receiving phenytoin intravenously. The patient's morning lab work results are back. So it says complete the statement below by selecting the correct options. So we have multiple drop down boxes. So it says the nurse knows that this phenytoin level is blank, which means that the blood level is blank. It says the nurse will monitor for blank, 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 and blank. So let's do a farm review over phenytoin. This is an anticonvulsant, meaning it decreases seizure activities, which is what this patient needs since they were admitted for a new onset of seizures. So it can be used to treat tonic-clonic seizures or focal seizures. Now, there's some things you wanna remember about this medication. So the information I wanna go over not only helps you in practice, but for other potential questions you may get about phenytoin. So here's some points to remember. You wanna watch the gums. This medication can cause gingival hyperplasia. So the gums will enlarge and they'll bleed really easily. So you gotta teach the patient about good mouth care. In addition, this medication can cause bone marrow suppression. Because of that, we're gonna watch that CBC. Particularly, we're looking at our white count and our platelets. And then we wanna tell the patient to report any abnormal rashes or skin lesions they may have while taking this medication because a condition called Steven Johnson syndrome can happen and we want to catch it immediately. So report immediately if you see this or if the patient sees this. In addition, if the patient is taking this orally, you don't want to give it with dairy products like milk or antacids. You wanna give those apart because it interferes with its absorption. And then, a really important thing which goes along with this question is that you want to be familiar with that therapeutic range because whenever a patient starts taking this they have to fall within this therapeutic range to make sure that they're not subtherapeutic where they're not getting enough of this so we're not really going to control their seizures and they're at risk for seizures or they're way too high which is going to lead them to have these abnormal signs and symptoms and it could even if the level gets high enough it could lead to seizure activity which is like a paradox but it can happen. And so we want them within this narrow range, which is between 10 to 20 micrograms per milliliter. So now that we know all that information, we can go ahead and start filling in the blank with the information that's provided in our drop down box. So again, it says the nurse knows that this phenytoin level is low, normal, or high. Well, the patient's level is 22 micrograms per milliliter, and that normal reference range is 10 to 20 micrograms per milliliter. So based on that, we know that the level is high. So we're going to select high. And then it continues to go on and say, which means that this blood level is subtherapeutic, therapeutic or toxic. Well, since it's on the high end, it must be toxic. Don't get confused about, don't overthink it in a sense by thinking, oh no, is this subtherapeutic or toxic? Because usually when everything's on the high end, it's gonna be toxic. We're on the low end, we're subtherapeutic. So we're going to put toxic. Now let's look at that second part of the question and it's drop down boxes. So it says the nurse will monitor for manic behavior, lethargy, aggression. So that's the first one. And it looks like it's trying to ask us questions that would show us that we understand what phenytoin toxicity is going to look like. And then the second drop down box 
is ataxia, aphasia, agnosia. And then our third one is strabismus, nystagmus, and amblyopia. And then it continues and says, you're either gonna to continue to monitor, administer the dose, or hold the next dose and notify the provider. So we've got to identify signs and symptoms of toxicity of this medication and then what our nursing action is going to be. Therefore, with all that said, let's review toxicity of phenytoin. Okay, so this is the medication that is going to act on your brain and that therapeutic range again is 10 to 20. So this patient is a little bit high, about two points over. So they're on the toxicity line. And what are we looking for? Well, with this, just with anything toxicity, you have those early signs and symptoms, and then you have those signs and symptoms, oh, this patient is super toxic. So with this, they're getting up there, but they're not crazy up there yet. And early on, you're typically gonna to start to see GI changes like nausea and vomiting. Then as the level keeps creeping up, you're also gonna to start to see neuro changes, which makes sense because this is a medication that acts on your brain. Your brain coordinates so many things in your body and in your mind and your movements. So if we're throwing something in there that's supposed to decrease seizure activity, we're gonna to start to see some neuro changes that goes along with becoming drowsy, confused. They're becoming lethargic, lethargy. They're not gonna be manic behavior or aggression. If anything, they're going to become comatose if we don't get this level down. So our first box is gonna be lethargy. Now let's look at our second box. So with this, we have ataxia, aphasia, and agnosia. So those are a lot of A words and they're fancy words that you definitely want to know like for other disease processes. For example, Alzheimer's disease. Anytime you see words like this, always memorize those because those are great things that tests love to ask you questions about because it's so specialized. Okay, but back to phenytoin, we know that it decreases seizure activity and seizure is pretty much just this massive electrical storm going on in the brain and causing major problems for our patient. So if we give them phenytoin, we wanna slow that down. But if we give them too much, like how this patient's getting, we're gonna slow things down way too much to the point where we've already established we're going to make them drowsy, have neuro changes to lethargy to possibly a coma. Now, because we're doing all that neurally, another thing that can happen because our brain controls our motor movements, we can start messing with that. So one thing that's really jumping out at me is the ataxia. This is where you can't control your muscle movement. You have no coordination. Well, that just goes back to how phenytoin is gonna work. You got too much, that's really gonna cause that. Now with aphasia, which is the next thing in our drop-down box, this is where the patient has issues understanding speech or formulating speech. And there are various types of aphasia, it depends on what type the patient has. And this tends to be more common in Alzheimer's disease because it affects different parts of the brain and there's those tangles there which can affect the speech parts of the brain. So we'll mark that off. And then agnosia, this is where the patient can't recognize everyday objects, people, or interpret their senses, like um, hearing, smell, taste. For example, let's say the patient forgets their spouse or their children, or they forget what that sensation means that they have to go urinate or have a bowel movement. That's why they have a lot of incontinence. And this is typically something not found in phenytoin toxicity, so we will cross that off. Therefore, it's ataxia. Then we have our third drop-down box, and the first one is strabismus. So this is an eye condition where your eyes are misaligned and they're not looking you know, straight and aligned. One of them can be turned another direction, let's say upward or downward. Then you have nystagmus. This is where you have rhythmic involuntary movement of the eyes. And then we have amblyopia. And this is uh, another term for, you maybe have heard of lazy eye. This is where an eye drifts off. So what are we gonna have with any toe and toxicity? With this, what's jumping out at me is the nystagmus because we have some eye movement that is relatively fast and abnormal. It's what's happening is that areas of our brain that control our eye movements are really misfiring because of this medication becoming toxic. So we have just this involuntary movement of the eyes. The other eye disorders, they really don't fit to how phenytoin would work and cause misfiring of our neurons. So 
We're going to put nystagmus for that one. And then to wrap up this statement, we have one last drop box. And it's asking us what we are going to do for this patient because we've established that this level's high, it's toxic, and those are the toxic signs and symptoms that can happen whenever this level starts trending upward like this. So what are we gonna do? Are we gonna continue to monitor them? Yeah, we're always gonna monitor them, but I don't know if that's the right, best answer, but let's look at the other ones. Administer the next dose. No, we don't want to minister the next dose because they don't need just more phenytoin on board because we're just going to cause a level to go up even more. So our third option says hold the next dose and notify healthcare provider. That's the best option. So of course we're going to continue to monitor them, but we've got to do some action. We can't just go and throw that next dose on and we need to notify the healthcare provider, let them know the level and what we need to do next want to decrease dosages, get that order to actually hold it so we're covered as a nurse for why we held the dose. And that will help hopefully doing those actions will get that level down so they're not as toxic. Okay, so that wraps up this review over how to answer a drop down close question. If you'd like to watch more videos in this series, you can access the link in the description below.